Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, the last two videos we did, you might not have seen if you don't, uh, well, if you don't head over to Hearts Ohm, which is our newest channel, uh, as we had left a f gosh, it, eight days went by before we had posted anything over there, and it's like a blink of an eye because we're trying to keep up with everything like you guys are, with everything that's going on in the world, but also preparations, you know? So we were doing things like taking the inventory, we're planting fruit trees and fruit bushes, and, you know, we're uh, get putting up more fencing and, and just getting ready to go to that next stage when it really, really escalates to another level, which it feels like it's doing. So, you know, blink an eye and look and wow, we hadn't posted anything in eight days. So we do apologize for that. And, you know, this is the last one we just did this morning about three hours ago. What What is the Golden Age belief system? Well, in the Golden Age, it's not really a belief system. What do we know about the nature of the universe that we find ourselves in? That's really the question because belief systems are for the dark age. They're, they're really not for uh, the more enlightened periods. And then before that was the question, are we slaves or sovereign beings? What sets modern Christianity and Islam apart? And I didn't really include Judaism in that. And that is, you know, the three anchors, pillars of, of the Abrahamic faiths. Because, again, uh, there's, there's so many different forms of Christianity out there, more forms of Christianity really than Islam, but there still are different branches of Islam, and there's different branches of Judaism, and it would be a good uh, video topic all on its own to go into what was the original uh, Jewish belief system. Because, again, w the original... It is really never anything that we have now. When you're talking about something that started outside of a Kali Yuga, uh, the Kali Yuga itself infiltrates every aspect of our life. The dark matrix acts, it infiltrates all the aspects of our life and it turns things into something else. And often it turns uh, original good intentions into dark usable ones for the system that's the bottom line the other thing i wanted to point out was you can come to patreon and you can watch all the videos from patreon uh, because patreon uh, is its own server so we upload everything to patreon Sometimes there's issues. Um, we haven't been able to get anything on BitChute for a couple of days uh, as we're jumping around from computers. And sometimes there's issues with, with Brightian. There could be issues with Rumble. But everything goes um, flawlessly so far. Thank God. <laughs> Knock on wood on Patreon. So everything will be up on Patreon. If you are a supporter on Patreon, which you could be for less than a dollar a month if you pay for a year in advance. It's ten dollars and eighty cents, um, is what it comes out to, and then you would get all the videos. As we are doing Patreon-only videos every second or third day, um, just begin, again for us to give back to them, you know, because they are supporting us in in these times. So onward, Vladimir Putin reportedly collapsed on the floor of his private apartment and had to be resuscitated. Multiple sources are saying this. We don't know if it's true or not. You know, again, would it really matter? Uh, it's, it's all about the show. That's the thing. It's all about the show. You got to realize this is a script. These guys don't make any of the real big decisions. Uh, they, they can make decisions and they do make decisions as long as it's with the bigger framework. We, right. I mean, they're basically given uh, the same suit, you know, about 50 different suits, but they're all the same and they put them in their closet, but they can choose whichever suit they want. <laughs> That's I just, love that analogy. it is, it's just kind of the gist of things. And as far as this, I always keep bouncing myself back to the art of war. And when you are strong, pretend that you're weak or feign that you're weak. So I don't think that if really, if really he had collapsed, I don't think they'd be advertising it, but, you know, never know. Yeah, again, 
there's there's so much deception going on right now and you know we we try to source everything that we we do here but we don't have the time during the day uh, you know because we we do work and we're trying to ma make a homestead so you know we don't necessarily track down every single news article um, but I try to see if, if multiple sources are talking about something in a particular day and then look at it from different angles. And there's a lot of confusion going on right now uh, with fleet movement. As you can see, this, this photo here spotted 130 kilometers west of Paphos are these ships. And what looks to be an intelligence vessel, uh, you know, of Russian origin, trailing them now yeah this carrier strike group 12 with the Geraldor ford that we were talking about uh is is and has been in a dangerous area let's just put it that way because you know it's not far off the coast of um, israel and it is within striking range of the russian navy with the turkish navy uh again this is so clearly about to go boom uh, uh, at a level that we haven't seen yet they are they are it seems stalling you know getting all their pieces in order waiting for something and and this is again something um that something may be something we would never know and we'll never know it literally could be uh the word from a <laughs> Mars or Nibiru, um, uh, when to go, literally. It could be, you know, something like that, which obviously they're not going to say, you know. And, and this is part of the big reveal. Why do we seem so confident when we're talking about Mars and Nibiru, the Anunnaki, the Gigi, the Draco? Um, because we know. Uh, it's not a belief. We know. Now, you know, it, it, it's up to you guys to just go with what feels right to you. Uh, we're not going to uh, twist your arm. Everybody's free to believe what what they want, but we're just telling you what we know. And again, it's from direct firsthand uh, conversations with beings of a non-terrestrial origin uh, that we get our information that we feel really solid about. I don't feel solid about anything I see in the news unless it conforms to what we already know. It is, it is something that takes some time to understand, but if you look at everything that's going on in the 3D and you try to pound that square peg in the round hole or the round hole in the square peg, you start to realize that none of this stuff makes sense. Pretty soon you start thinking, wow, all of these leaders are just completely retarded. What is wrong with them? Well, the truth is, is there is nothing wrong with them. They are all following a certain plan, and these plans come from... Uh, a little higher up than we might see from 3D. Yeah, higher up in many different ways, yeah. <laughs> you know, dimensionally and, and also up and out of the atmosphere. So Israel I issues an ultimatum on Gaza. IDF spokesman Jonathan Conricus said there would be no ground operation if Hamas surrenders and releases all hostages. Well, we know they're not going to surrender. And again, this is what Cindy's been talking about, the art of war. What's different now is that uh, the cards are on the table. I Israel's been able to do what it wants with no um, real fear of any sort of major retribution. And yeah, again, there are players, like when we're talking generals, there might be some generals that know the bigger picture, but probably most don't. I doubt it. You know, again, the the real government always hides in the shadows. And so, you know, there 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 is a certain amount of leeway given. Of course, every single sh soldier makes the decision whether or not they're going to shoot or not shoot. And we've talked about this before. You know, when you talk about draftees, oh boy, there was uh, some young person. I'm going to use the word person <laughs> to describe this young person. Because uh, they might not appreciate any way, other way that they're being described, but uh, saying that this generation doesn't have time to get drafted, they have much more important things to do, uh, like play their video games, etc. 
Well, the reality is, you know, the draft and forcing people into uh, acts of war is something that's happened on this planet the entire Kali Yuga and the end of the Bronze Age, the beginning of this Bronze Age. It's just what they do. They force people to fight. They force people to kill. And the reality is, again, so many soldiers on the battlefield, when it comes time to pull the trigger, they'll either not pull the trigger, they'll just, you know, hide and, and cover themselves up, uh, defecate on themselves, you know, not to be blunt, but it's true. Um, it, it, the, the, the abject sheer terror of the situation gets to so many. And then others will choose to shoot knowing that they're aiming in the wrong direction because they don't want to kill somebody. That's part of, I think, what makes most humans humans is understanding that life is precious and you really don't want to kill somebody. And and the saddest part of it all is all this is orchestrated uh, to create the conditions where, where humans uh, become more demonic, more dark, more evil through this forced warfare. It lowers our frequency. It makes us more like the demonic entities that are running the planet. And, and it works. And that's why they do it time and time and time again. So, you know, what's really going on here? Of course, they're not going to surrender. And you have the Israeli minister threatens to wipe Iran's leaders off the face of the earth. If Tehran uh, helps and joins its ally Hezbollah in the war, um, that's already going on. And and yeah, the, these are still pawns. So yes, uh, generals can be killed. As we know, presidents can be killed, or at least some of their body doubles, uh, <laughs> clones can be killed. It's it, you know the, every every human ultimately is expendable to the system. Every human is expendable to the system because this planet is a resource for these beings. That's how they view it. Nothing but a resource. And right now, there's just simply put, too many humans. It, it's not ideal for their return to have 8 billion humans on the planet. And, and again, you could look to the Sumerian tales that talk about Enlil saying there's too many humans, they're too noisy, they're unmanageable, we need to just wipe them out. That says the system, that, that gives you all you need to know right there. Because the same beings are in charge. And Enlil and Enki, by the way, you know, they're not in charge now. And in reality, they're, they've, they were never in charge uh, on Nibiru. And even the entity above them, Anu, it, it was never in charge on Nibiru either. So you got to realize, even though the Sumerian tales do give away a lot, uh, they are still <laughs> written from their perspective. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you really have to look at things deeper and go within and find that mind-body spiritual practice because the, it sets up this type of magnetism that's in your body and that brings you closer and closer to the truth as you do these practices it, it's really quite amazing it's just a magnetic draw to, to the truth and then you go from uh, not knowing and, and wondering to these knowings that think this is what's going on um, but not everybody takes the time to do those practices so <laughs> you know there's a lot of work to be done Absolutely. <clears throat> but we do know uh, there's thousands of you that are regulars on this channel that you understand exactly what we're saying because you also have firsthand knowledge and experience of this yourself because of the diligence of your spiritual practices. So you see this here. I found this very, very interesting. Um, yesterday, the Dwight D. Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group was diverted from joining the USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group in the Mediterranean to the Persian Gulf. There it will face Iranian long-range anti-ship missiles, the Iranian Navy, the 44th Chinese Naval Task Force, along with others, and possibly Russian and, and North Korean warships and submarines. So... 
yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the US and I fleet map because we know it entered and it should have been in the area probably by Wednesday, I think. Um, but apparently it, it's not and it's being diverted. Um, hmm, this is just very interesting. And, and, you know, there's so much going on right now that is very art of war. Uh, here you see the U.S. Henry J. Kaiser class tanker, U.S. N.S. Leroy Grumman, uh, east of Gibraltar, heading for the Atlantic, possibly meeting up with the Eisenhower uh, in the mid-Atlantic as they head west. Uh, you know, what's really going on here? Because it seems like um, the, well, the U.S. and NATO is, is shifting uh, it's positioning or, or are they so you know again the art of war you always have to uh, cause deception and yet we understand that even though everybody might be following protocol as far as uh, trying to really hide their resources there's always going to be those at the top that you know they want a certain outcome it's going to get to be leaked. It's going to get to be known. So here you see uh, the USS Ford, 345 kilometers from Tel Aviv, 133 kilometers off southwest of Cyprus. Uh, again, <laughs> there's Russian bases, a lot of Russian power not far uh, away from there, and, and also Iranian power and also Turkish power. USS Bataan staying in the Persian Gulf, contrary to the latest reports that it will head towards the Mediterranean. We believe the U.S. has taken this step because of the deteriorating situation in Iraq. Uh, 2,000 Marines aboard this ship. Yeah, the drone attacks haven't stopped. You know, U.S. Uh, soldiers have been killed in drone attacks. Um, you know, this is escalating, and, and it still may take more time. But when you see stratotankers coming into this area too from from Europe, these are refuelers for for fighters. Now, is this just going to be a a regular run they do every day? It could very well be yeah, that they'll send a, a numerous. And there's also some coming in uh, from the opposite direction, from west, I should say. Is this going to be a normal flight path? It, it, it very well may be. That way, you know, again, if you just start doing something all the time, you don't know when they're actually going to launch the fighters. Or, you know, it could be that something's very imminent. Israel has launched multiple strikes against Syrian airports, Damascus and Aleppo, presumably to preclude Iranian arms shipments to the region. So the Russians made available to the Iranians their air base in, at Kemenim. Yeah, absolutely, because now if Israel strikes this air base, they've attacked Russia directly. Ah, yes, absolutely. This is a, exactly that type of escalation as you look at all these Russian planes in the background. Yeah, it's, it's getting ready to go boom. Uh, I don't see how it could hold off until 2024, really. Um, but it still may be a little while and ultimately, uh, it, they will kick this off because they've had it planned for a very long time, at least since 1871. What an interesting year that was. Very interesting. And we're going to pull it up eventually <clears throat> and take a look at that astrologically and see what planetary alignments did we have? And are they similar to what we have now? Uh, so much, so much going on. Can they draw it out? Yes. Do they want to draw it out? Most likely. But at the same time, they need they need their assets in place. They need to replace uh, certain certain business modalities with a different type of business modality that brings about more control. The controllers just are not happy with the amount of control that they already have. And if they see another way to gain more control, Boy, oh boy, they're going to do it. So here you have a meeting of foreign ministers in, taking place in Tehran, Iran, Russia, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Armenia attending the summit. That's interesting. You know, Turkey is a NATO member, but are they really? Yeah, and, and again, it, it's, it's always been 
to me exactly what my my son had said you know watch turkey yeah because they are a absolute wild card player in this and israeli incursion into gaza stopped on several fronts yesterday israeli armored patrol caught in an ambush near rafa leaves behind more than 10 tanks over 20 tanks armored vehicles trying to enter gaza's khan yunus were forced to retreat sunday night the battle continues yeah, as as they are meeting much more heavily armed and capable fighters than they are used to, because they're not really. Again, it's not just Russia fighting Ukraine, and over here it's not just Israel uh, fighting Hamas. This is really a proxy war uh, that will soon be a world war. U.S. renews warning it will defend Philippines after incidents with Chinese vessels in the South China Sea. And it, what was weird is I kept, I woke up this morning with Mindanao uh, in my mind. And it's like, why Mindanao? Mindanao. You know, that that's the second largest island in the Philippines. There could be something coming there, some sort of incident, as you see. Look at that. <laughs> that's a Chinese vessel with a Philippine vessel. This is another spot where things can go boom. And again, the U.S. took control of the Philippines back in the Spanish-American War a long time ago. <laughs> a different century. China's central bank injected $100.2 billion into their lending market on Friday. And the Philippines is an uh, independent country now. I should interject, even though they still... Um, I've been an on-again, off-again ally with the U.S. Sometimes, you know, it feels like they're going to break away, and then other times they come back. Uh, at the moment, absolutely, um, you know, it, they are on the U.S. side. But, you know, again, everything is subject to change in this world besides the script. And even the script can be uh, manipulated and adjusted as, as needed. Mm hmm Oh, it sure can. I mean, they're but they're professionals at it. And I keep going back to uh, 1984, how they just kept rearranging the headlines and they're really keeping people on edge, keeping people um, uh, just ready for anything to happen at any moment. And, and the one thing that keeps me grounded in my own truth is the understanding that they want to change the entire system and they're probably going to do that sooner rather than later it's been on the agenda for a very long time you can go back and look in history for all the other things that have changed and that they have done and put into place you can see it might take years but you go on down the line and they you can mark off all of these agendas that keep going into place so this is just one more yeah and China made the largest injection on record of one-year policy loans on Monday. It comes after China unexpectedly implemented their biggest rate cut since 2020. They also cut rates on six trillion of mortgages. So, you know, is it um, a massive economic collapse that's going to happen in China? You've seen the decoupling, and and the reality is again, this whole system that we have in place now. They want to get it, you know, just it's it's they want to bury it six feet under. They don't want any more yuan. They don't really want any more dollars. They want one global currency. And again, what are they going to how are they going to possibly do that with all these different nations? Well, because they've already talked about it. You know, the real power structure of the future is corporate. The nation state will not have a purpose in the future. And, you know, again, the corporate even, it, well, <laughs> you know, again, it, we, we don't have much time left before everything is revealed. And, you know, again, it makes me wonder, boy, are people going to be shocked when their belief systems collapse in front of them? Uh, you know, we were talking about War of the Worlds and how people were coming and listening to uh, Orson Welles doing a radio program, it was theatrical, dramatic, or was it a psyop, to test reality. You know, how will people react when they all of a sudden know we're not alone? We've never been alone, you know, and, and the world is under attack by an extraterrestrial presence. 
And so many people believe so strongly in Project Bluebeam that they don't think there's any such thing as aliens. Aliens have run the show the entire time. This is the big reveal. Our belief systems that we have, you got to understand again, 60 to 65% of the world says they are either Christian or Muslim. And within 10 years time, the entire world will know the reality of the belief structures. And they'll, you know, you'll have two thirds of humanity recognizing that their belief structure was not reality. It was not reality. It, and that's going to shake people to the core when, you know, the way they view life and the afterlife is not what they thought it was the entire time. You want to talk about paradigm shift and you want to talk about just the collapse of everything societal that you know. Well, I, I believe, if I remember correctly, it was NASA did a study probably back in the 1950s where they took a group of adults and they were testing them and, and trying to figure out, well, what would happen if everyone knew that there were extraterrestrials? And based on these studies and tests and questioning of other people, they determined that if it were to come to light, that there were extraterrestrials, the an entire nation would definitely collapse. If not, you know, if the information were worldwide, then yes, you know, everywhere is going to collapse because it would be such a huge, huge paradigm shift for people from what they thought they knew. It's just too much of a jump. So what they've done, you know, psychologically, which is what, you know, people who work with other people's brains they do they go baby steps they take baby steps and they say things like well we did find some unidentified germs on one of our satellites out there in space you know so in that sense there are extraterrestrial you know beings and so they just do these little teeny tiny baby steps just like they've been doing all the way up to a full reveal and we are coming so close to the end of that that full reveal they've really done a very good job at uh getting people to understand in a gentle way that they're they're not all alone but for them control is the most important and they knew if they dropped this bomb too heavy too fast they would lose they would lose everyone everything they definitely would lose control and that's what they don't want that's why you see things set up in increments like you do yeah, you know, and what you're seeing right now out there, again, if at all possible, you, you really don't want to be in the big cities during the time frame that we're going into because it's going to be chaotic as you see this elderly man and just pull up to the wrong intersection where there's a protest going on and for no reason, they just start to beat up on his car and who knows what they would have done to him. He, he didn't do anything. And, and this is, again, the situation that we are facing on this planet. As the real controllers have organized this, again, they've done this to a T. They get us to uh, take care of each other for them. Pasadena reports extremely rare case of locally transmitted dengue virus. Uh, as you see, you know, I, and I got to just put it out there, too. I think a lot of people are wondering and having experiences with insects, mosquitoes in particular, and maybe ticks, too, where they don't feel like they're biological, like they might be drones. They might be some sort of uh, robot. And I actually had a video lined up I was going to do on this that we never ended up doing, but we could revisit it. Um and look at it from a biblical perspective because, again, that's part of the script and, and they've told us everything that they have planned uh, through various sources. But, yeah, case of local, uh, of local dengue virus, the first known case in California to occur in a person that had not recently traveled. Now, that's the concerning part of this. Now, maybe, you know, somebody in their family or, or next-door neighbor did. Uh, but even so, that's still very, very concerning. Absolutely. 
And this is another little uh, telltale thing about what they're going to be telling to telling to us in the future. Air on Mars may one day be breathable thanks to a new desert-dwelling bacteria p- paint. They just paint it on, and, and the bacteria reproduces and creates oxygen and will basically terraform the planet. And uh, I wonder why they haven't tried to change Mars, but then... Again, everything that we see is really truly an illusion. We can view Mars through through telescopes and get a good view. Uh, we could see Jupiter and the four biggest moons as well. You know, there are reptilians working with humans uh, inside Mars, and, and the planet is, is not devoid of population. They're just simply inside the planet. And yes, you know, many things have been spotted on the surface of the planet. Mars, you know, again, uh, it's where the GG came from, that that lower class, um, quote unquote, God. <laughs> again, you know, gods is a term that we really, uh, it doesn't serve any purpose because it's been attributed to too many different types of beings. These have always been extraterrestrials and interdimensional beings. There are some beings that live inside earth and have for a very long time on more than one density and then also uh underneath the oceans the moon is 40 million years older than thought ancient crystal suggests you know and it's interesting that they give us too that uh, for years scientists have mostly agreed the basic gist of the moon's origin story about four and a half billion years ago a giant mars-sized object called thea 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 Slammed into Earth, ejected hot debris, coalesced into our moon. Well, uh, the reality is Earth is Tiamat. Uh, Earth was hit by an object. It was part of that greater war that was ongoing. And then Earth uh, did experience a reorganization of itself. And these higher beings, the ones that we've known as the ancient and shining ones, helped with terraforming Earth from Tiamat. Again, Tiamat uh, was much larger than Earth. You know, Mars is about 60% of the size of the Earth. The Earth is about 60% of the size of of what was Tiamat. Tiamat, by the way, um, symbolized by a dragon. Not a bad dragon. Not all dragons are bad. And again, the AI intelligence that we think of as the true Satan at the very, very top of the pyramid, it just shows itself as a dragon because it's emulating Tiamat because we are the survivors of the cataclysm of Tiamat. The dragon form is so very ancient. It's an ancient form. It's extremely powerful. So... If AI wants to imitate something, yes, that's the form that I feel I I understand it now, but I didn't understand it way back when, when I could see that black AI dragon and what was it doing. But it wants to emulate the same power as the real dragon, the true dragon, Tiamat. I mean, every single one of us, we all have some form of a dragon energy inside of us some more than others but it's definitely there that's a very curious type of energy that can do many powerful things and i do think that people will understand it more as we come closer you know closer out of this kali yoga into the next and into the next we will be able to recognize this but until then people are pretty exhausted mike was showing the kitty there i was going to make a comment on the kitty walking across the floor and just dropping just dropping like a rock and yes 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 we want to see the kitty again because this is a great allegory for what this world is like i mean just walking along and just finally one day you can't take it anymore so you just flop and 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 that's okay take a good rest while you're there and I just wanted to reiterate, uh, anybody that's, you know, curious or looking deeper into the spiritual side of things, come to Heart's Home, you know, because that's exactly where we go deeper and and give more of the spiritual side of things. So please join us over there. Uh, I think we're at like 2.5 thousand subscribers over there. 
Um, and again, I would love to see the rest of E Arts and Evolutionary Family joining us over there. Or join us on Patreon, because then you're going to know every, vi every single video uh, that comes up when it comes up, you know, bar none. So as always, guys, much love. Stay prepared. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.